What's up everybody? This is D from Brooklyn and I'm giving you an update on the 20 gallon custom all-in-one system. Now, if you don't know what's going on with the all-in-one system, you better hit the subscribe button because you've been missing out on what's going on. I always appreciate it because sharing is caring. I like to show the good with the bad. So with that being said, let's get into it. From this moment on, you will now be known as Sharkbait. Sharkbait! Welcome, brother Sharkbait! Sharkbait! Enough with the Sharkbait! Sharkbait! Now let's take a look at the all-in-one system. With that, I'm going to zoom in. First of all, it's an all-in-one. It's been running for about four years, I think, if I'm not mistaken. It's a 20-gallon long in which I built everything into the tank myself, including this custom little overflow area. We have the auto top off, the heating system, the return pump, and a little filtration, a little area over there, which is basically filter floss and an overflow built into the tank. I have my spin swirl hooked up to the return pump, which circulates the water throughout the tank. And I have a j -Bow, I believe it's an M20, which has been running for that duration of the time. Now, I'm just going to put a little note on it. The j -Bows will die on you. This one has not died because I don't have it on pulse. If you run the j -Bows on a regular steady flow, they tend to not die. This one has been going on for multiple years and I've had no problem. When you put them on pulse, they tend to die out. But anyway, the tank has had a recent battle with hair algae. Really crazy. As I mentioned in the last video, my little Zinnia garden is devastated with hair algae. So I pulled it out. I have Zinnia in the neighboring tank, so I'm not really uh, stressed about it, but that was my waving hand Zinnia rock. And I really kind of let it get out of control because it took over the uh, SPS that I had in the tank. So I decided to remove what was left of it. Um, it was getting a little shabby and just clean it off while I fight the hair algae. So in the tank, we have removed a majority of the hair algae from the rocks. It's coming back a little bit. Um, let me show you what I used to fight it, which was a age old product called slime. You know, the slime remover. This stuff is really good. It's been around for a long time in the reef hobby. I think a lot of people kind of forgot about it, but with the uh, dosage of the uh, slime remover, the red slime remover, it kind of helps with removing the hair algae. It makes it really soft after about a day or two. You can remove it manually, change water, and then uh, dose it again. I do around three treatments. Like every two days, you'll dose it, do a water change, dose it, do a water change until you get the hair algae situation under control. So I did that. I removed what frags were under there. I had a really big, I should have kept it to show you guys. A really big piece of favia that was overgrown by that uh, that waving hand zinnia <laughs> so I'm debating what I'm gonna put on that rock right now you can see the mushroom if I zoom out you can see since I moved that one of the mushrooms released itself and it is now trying to grow up that rock you guys that keep mushrooms they will move and and place themselves in very strategic areas so it's really imperative to keep them under control. You can see this one is splitting right here. I'm going to wait until it fully splits and forms. Probably this is going to be one, two, three different mushrooms. And then I'll move them to the tank upstairs. Um, let me give you a different shot. You can see from the side view of the tank, it is spectacular in the growth. How it completely covers the bottom of the tank. The clownfish pretty much have a whole tank of hosting <laughs> mushrooms. And because this tank has no substrate, you would be tricked or fooled into thinking that there's sand in here. But there is no sand in this tank. There's just rock and coral rubble. So the mushrooms are pretty much thriving in this tank because every piece of uneating food is pretty much landing on a mushroom. So that is why they are growing so fast. And if you guys are subscribers and you'll remember the purple mushroom village from upstairs, just bringing one little piece of rock from downstairs. Look how this mushroom has completely spread over here. 
I had a uh, Pavona over here and it grew over the Pavona and I took that out. So I'll probably be moving some of these mushrooms and this tank will more or less be dedicated to just soft corals. Now, if you hear that little creaking from the tripod, that is because I have a new phone adapter on my tripod to kind of keep it a little more steady. And that will bring you over to the new addition that I added to the tank a couple of days ago. And that is the snowflake clownfish, which has become like really uh, Mike Tyson versus Holyfield with Fred. <laughs> Fred, well... Fred and Wilma are my pair that was already in there. I lost the original Wilma about three, three months ago or two, yeah, about three months ago, really. Replacing it with the half Miss Bar clownfish. Um, Wilma is not liking the fact that there's a new lady in the tank. So she's really kind of like, yo, get up out of here. So I've been swapping them out in my little, uh, my little containment chamber here. To kind of bring the aggression down but as you can see they both teamed up <laughs> on kind of like saying we don't want you here so i may just move that snowflake to one of my other tanks now i had wilma in here for the last two days to kind of get the snowflake to eat and get acclimated and make sure it wasn't any torn fins or anything like that so i can see that the finish is good they've been pretty much just picking and keeping the snowflake down in the rocks so I took the liberty of switching them out and, and letting Wilma just get back to a regular routine. And I think this kind of activity kind of strengthens the pair of your existing clownfish. It kind of really strengthens the existing pair. So I'm hoping that maybe this will entice those two to breed. You can see the miss bar there. I can get it a little closer there. You can see the mist bars, really, really a pretty fish. I, I really kind of taken a liking to the mist bars. And uh, not really a, a aggressive fish. This is the most that I've ever seen it kind of act aggressive. So I'm probably going to have to move them any day now and, and get them into another tank. But it, the good thing is uh, now that I know that they're pretty much establishing themselves as a pair, Fred and Wilma there. So that's a good thing. Let's get to the final top shot. So this is one of my favorite views of the tank because you really get a real nice idea of the coral coverage and the uh, effects of the aquascape and how it's laid out in the bottom of the tank. So uh, really nice to see all the mushrooms are completely overtaking the bottom. You can see a little shake and bake from the spin stream. You can get a real idea of the variable flow. You can get a, a, also a good look at my internal, my little custom refugium box, which is basically a beta box with some chato in it. And that is under the tank light. So uh, not the uh, customary. Got a little bit of a uh, gookity gook right here, which I'll clean off, but that's nothing. And um, slowly but surely, we've gotten rid of that hair algae. So I'm looking forward to a uh, placing some new frags over there. I haven't decided what I want to do yet. I may just put a big torch. Originally, I had a torch in this little bottom corner and I moved it like a dummy and it just went downhill once I moved it. And the mushrooms took over. <laughs> so I'll probably put a torch right here. These, these, uh, these mushrooms are really beautiful and they are really like fluorescent in certain adjustments of the light so i really took a, a liking to them i have tons of them i have them in every tank as well as the purples also i'm introducing some red mushrooms so we'll see how that takes and there's a shot of the solitary red mushroom over there <laughs> as well as one of the leathers that i moved from upstairs um the other stars of this tank are my my uh, cardinal fish. I love the pajama cardinal fish. I have spotted cardinal fish in the other tank. My mean dudes over there. I have two in that little cube over there where you can see I've moved the uh, zinnia over. So I'm not really worried about losing those. And uh, I got a leather buried in there trying to wait till I can clean up this little remnant of algae over there. And hopefully that takes off. But I'll probably move that leather out of there 
and uh, put some other more uh, appealing frags in there. Maybe even Zoas. This rock is more or less the centerpiece of the tank since the tank is small as when you come to the tank, you're used to seeing that big bowl of Zinnia just blowing in the breeze. So uh, I'm gonna see what I'm gonna do with that. But for the most part, the tank is running for a few years now and it's on the autopilot. I have the uh, Arc, the Ocean Revives up here, which have been doing a good job. And that's it. So that is the update on the nano version of the Brooklyn Reef. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Leave your question and comments below if you have any questions. What do you think I should put in that corner? I'm really not sure. Whatever it is, it's going to have to be really, really strong and fight off these mushrooms because those mushrooms are no joke. They are growing really fast. Look at the size. This one is about six to eight inches in diameter if you can see my hand in relation to that mushroom in the tank take a look at this one this is one that has split so I'll, I'll move those to another tank and make some room there so i'm gonna wrap it up love peace and hair grease thank you guys for watching and i'm gonna be out see ya